Now, joining me to lend in this thought on this accusation by the All Progressive Congress the, and the recent protest in polit its political affairs today, Ojo. Thank you for joining us. Now, looking at the recent protests in Niger State and Kano State, do you believe they were genuinely sparked by grievances over the rising cost of living, or do you see any evidence of political manipulation? Thank you, Tamilore. For me, forget APC uh, is the governing party in Niger State. So the, the protest that was witnessed in Mina yesterday was uh, carried out under the APC, under the nose of APC government. And uh, if you are talking of Kano, Kano happens to be the state of the national chairman of all progressive congress and um, dr omar ganduji so i i do not believe that the nmpp was the one that is getting people uh felix Moka and his co-travelers need to understand that uh nigerians are not living in they are living on planet Earth and they are not in space if they choose to play the ostrich and believe that everything is well under the apc government Nigerians are saying, no, this is not what we voted for. This is not our renewal. Though. And um, the truth of the matter is that uh, I, in this part of the, the world, we always want to uh, we always want to play politics with everything. Uh, the rising cost of living is there for everybody to see. Uh, APC APC uh, members are not going to different markets from that of. Uh, other citizens of this country. Uh, they, 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 they are suffering the same excruciating pains that you and I are suffering. After all, when the president came, the first thing he said was to remove subsidy. And price of uh, PMS, that's petrol, jumped from uh, under 200 naira to 600 and above. And that in, it, in itself set up a chain of ripple effects which has spiraled the uh, cost of living. Apart from that, it's also the exchange rate, floating of exchange rate, uh, leaving it to the uh, vagaries of demand and supply, which has snowballed out of the control of Central Bank of Nigeria. And whether you like it or not, uh, poverty, unemployment is rising, uh, even by World Bank and IMF projections. Uh, things are not okay with Nigeria. So for Felix Moka and his co-travelers to be saying that it's the opposition element that are instigating people to protest against the PC administration, I hope they are not setting the stage for another NSAS protest. Because when a government lives in denial and tells everybody off and pass everything um, uh, off as a uh, you know, uh, as the anti work of opposition. The, when the reality comes and when the mass, uh, when the critical mass of Nigerians take to the streets, uh, Felix Moka may not even be able to stay to watch uh, what will unfold at that time. Okay. So, all right, Mr. Ojo, now how do you think the government should respond to this protest? Very clearly, uh, Tamilore, if you follow the presidential broadcast from the time he took over on um, on uh, May 29 to the, the his broadcast on June 12 to his broadcast on July 31 to his broadcast on October 30 or October 1 to that of January 1, 2024. You find a common trend. The president himself admitted that things are not the way it should be. Only that he was he kept pleading for time, and wish that he had alternatives to what is taking Nigeria through. But the the patience of the people have been taxed, and it is not an elastic uh, elastic patient. So what the president needs to do is to uh, at least in the minimum. Uh, live up to his commitments that he made in his presidential broadcast of July 31, 2023, where he rolled out the palliatives. I uh, recall that he said he was going to support nano, small, and medium enterprises, including 
mega enterprises which he promised that he was going to loan one billion naira to 75 uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, he has not fulfilled that. He promised 3,000 as uh, compressed natural gas buses that uh, to to bring down the cost of uh, commuting uh, by by those who want to move from point A to point B. We have not seen any single one of these so-called CNG buses on our streets, mm -hmm. uh, even though there was a flag off. Uh, he promised to ensure food security and said he was going to cultivate 500,000 hectares of grains, wheat, maize, sorghum, uh, and, uh, and guinea corn or whatever. We haven't seen this happen. He promised to give states uh, in, in an infrastructural support fund. We haven't seen this happen. Uh, even the 50 billion in them to have fear marked, uh, for 30, 30 billion of it, which is a loan, and 20 billion for states to buy grains and, and distribute for citizens. Uh, in many states, this has not been done or done haphazardly. We know that uh, what has happened with the conditional cash transfer, uh, the $800 million that uh, was borrowed from the World Bank, which was put in charge of uh, humanitarian affairs. We knew what has happened to that money. Just last Sunday, EFCC said they've been able to reclaim uh, 30 billion out of the 37.1 billion that was mismanaged under uh, Sadi Omar Farouk and uh, James Okwete. So all of these things, when you put all of this together, the fact that the conditional cash transfer that was meant to be given to 15 million households, uh, we haven't seen that happen. Even the wage award that he promised federal workers, 35,000 dollar wage award, the federal government has only paid for two months. There is still outstanding three months that are yet to be paid. So these are things that needed to be done for us to be, uh, for tempers to calm down and for people to continue to wait on the president for better days ahead. All right. Also, Thank you, Jide Ojo, political affairs analyst. I'm sorry to cut you short, but time is now on our side. Thank you for speaking with us.